Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the enterprise resource planning architecture. In the prior session, we looked at what is an ERP system? What is an enterprise risks planning? So if you need to know what is ERP, pl please look at the prior session. In this session, we'll focus on the architecture of an ERP system. There are two types of architecture for an ERP system, or at least this is what's available now. So what is an architectural system for an ERP? Well, it referred to the overall design and structure. Basically, how is the ERP system is designed? How is the software designed? It includes hardware, software, network component that make up that system. And we have two types. We have a client server and we have service oriented architecture. In this session, I'm going to explain what a client server is. It's usually called a three layer and I'm going to explain what a service oriented ERP is. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Let's start with the client server part one. The architecture of an ARP typically include several layers, usually three, and those are the user interface. Now, what is the user interface? Think about user interface. When I am using right now a laptop, I'm looking at my screen. This is my user interface. This is what I'm interfacing with. With, So those are the user interface. Simply put, the user interface are, you, are utilized or used by the employees of the company or by customers. For example, you would log in through your user interface, your laptop, your desktop, your iPad, your tablet, your iPhone to input an order. This is what called a user interface. And you'll put the order within the application of an ERP. So this is one component of the ERP. I don't mean component, different business component. One component means one part, one piece of the ERP, which is called the user interface. And this is what you usually, you and I as users see when we are dealing with an ERP system. I'm pretty sure if you place an order of, at Amazon, when you look at the screen, those are user interface. And we're, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them. The second layer is called the business logic. And the second layer would involve hardware, CPUs, things that's gonna be processing. Think of it as the brain of the system. Basically the computer software that's running the logic. It's called the business logic. This is the second layer. And the third layer, it's called the data storage layer. And this is the data storage layer. And this is what I said, it's a three layer, one, two, and three. Now let's talk a little bit more in details about each layer separately. Starting with the user interface, what is it? The user interface provides the means, the, the, the way for users to interact with the system. What could be a good example? Customer inputting the sales order on the website through an application server. As, as Again, as I said, it could be a tablet, a phone, so on and so forth. And usually we, we have what's called graphical user interface, GUI, some of these systems are really nice. And that makes a difference in the real world because most ERPs now are web-based. So you want to look good. This is your face to the customer. And this is an important component of the ERP system, even from a design perspective. Think about when you log in at a website. Does it look good when you place an order? Is it easy to use? Do the color matches? So on and so forth. Then we have, as I said, the second layer is the business logic layers that contain the rules and the processes, basically the application, the software that's running the system that govern the system operation. So keep on going with this example. The customer input the sales order. Now the system create a sales order. Send it to the warehouse for shipping. The shipping will send it to packaging. They will ship it. They will build the customer and they would receive the payment. So all of this, all these steps are happening here. The system is processing. Now they're not going, they're not taking place all at the same time. But the point is once you input the data, then it gets processed at this level. And the third level, we said the data. The data storage does what? It stores the data. 
it stores the data in different places, easy to use, stored well, connected with other applications, so on and so forth. Now you could have many databases, but all integrated, organized. And what this is, a system like this, what, it, what does it do? Because all integrated, remember ERP is integrated, it can scale the business. So even though you are growing larger, you are adding more services, you need more, for example, now you accept the cryptocurrencies, which is I don't care about cryptocurrencies. And in ERP, you can have an application for that that's integrated with everything. That's the whole purpose of an ERP system. We could also have a DERP system in the cloud. So the only thing at the at the client or at the company is the user interface and everything else, these operation, the engine and the database is on the cloud. And we'll talk about the cloud application later on because we have to learn about cloud application. So this is the client server part one and part two, which is client server. And once you understand what a client server is, what does it look like for an ERP, you have a good idea about the traditional ERP system. When we say traditional, it's not that old, but now what we have is service oriented ERP, which is basically mostly web based services. The service oriented architecture or SOA is a design approach that organizes an ERP into a collection of independent modular services. Hold on a second. Didn't we, aren't we going away? That's the whole purpose of ERP is to stay away from independent modular services. Yes, but those new independent modular services, they can be easily combined into new functionality. So this approach allows flexibility and scalability because they can be integrated real easily. Although they're independent, but they're easily integrated and scalable. So different services will be different responsible for specific fun fun function. For example, you can have one for data storage, even within the system itself, business logic and user interface, but they are integrated. They are integrated. For example, a service responsible for managing inventory could be integrated with a service responsible for managing customer to create a new service that manages inventory and customer together. So they're easily integratable. So in a, I'm not saying we're going back to independent functions, but what I'm trying to say is the ERP system itself Yes, it is one system, but, but with the SOA, the service oriented architect, it can be broken down into small component. So this allow better integration with other systems and technologies such as cloud services, mobile services, and over the internet things, especially over the internet. Everything now is over the internet. So by breaking the system down into a collection of services, you can easily now and be integrated with system and technology, which could, which could improve functionality and performance of the system. Now you could add any system you want to. Maybe you have a better system that could integrate with your system real easily, then you choose that better system and use it. And this is what a service-oriented ER, ERP is. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, review MCQs, that's gonna help you either on your CPA exam, CISA, CMA, or if you're taking an accounting information system course. Good luck, everyone. Study hard. Good luck. And of course, stay safe. Invest in your career.